everyone. Week four, Lady Boss Series, Crystal Marshall here. Please, please, if you haven't already, please go to our website, ladybossresources.com, and it has all of the blogs and all of these things reiterated and all of the, you know, social media classes and IG help and 30 plus blogs plus 150 page PDF that has my entire full-time marketing strategy on there just for you in this class. So anyway, week four, you finally made it. I cannot wait to see how many people have actually done the thing that they want to do, start their LLC and be an entrepreneur and be a mom and be, you know, at home with their kids or whatever that you want to do and whatever passion that you are trying to go for. So I'm excited for you guys. Cannot wait to share with you some of my favorite tricks and tips in this one. And we are going to talk about a little bit wrapping up of some things that I am very passionate about, knowing multiple disciplines, having uh, multiple streams of income, what different kinds of income there are, uh, what to watch out as a business owner for with scams and a lot of things that are very common nowadays, and basically how to keep your mental wellness, your physical wellness, and all of that. So we're gonna cover a lot of ground today and I cannot wait to share with you some of my favorite things. Okay, so let's first talk about multiple income streams. Now, a lot of my photographer friends in these uh, photographer groups I'm in don't really see a big reason or uh, pre-2020, a big reason to have multiple little eggs and multiple little baskets, but then as soon as 2020 hit, everybody was online, everybody's trying to sell classes online, everybody's trying to do things and have little things cooking in the background, then they realized, man, I really wish that I had listened to people like me, um, but having a multiple stream. So for me, there are three different types of income streams. A lot of people in the creative arts field, like photographers or graphic designers, that kind of thing, they tend to just try to make all of their money off of the freelance market. So they're posting so that they can only work on the weekends, you know, graduations are coming up, um, senior shots are coming up, babies, you know, weddings, that kind of thing. So it's really, really hard to budget your family based on that because everything ebbs and flows depending on people's budgets, depending on maybe, you know, your contacts, your marketing, all that stuff. So it's very, it just ebbs and flows. It's really hard to have a successful business based on just freelance. So I would just say freelance should be only 10 to 15% of your income. It's the icing on the cake. It's the bonus. It's a little Christmas bonus. It's the birthday bonus. It's some little things here and there. It's some spending money. Most of your income should come from either passive income streams or your bread and butter. And your bread and butter should be a majority of what you're making. So it could be, you know, 50 to 75%, depending on your time, depending on your discipline, whatever, of your total income. Bread and butter for me have been social media, website, graphic design, um, setting up people's e-stores, consulting, uh, social media clients, like just literally posting for people every single morning and getting paid every month and it's auto bill paid. Um, having coaching clients that they get on an auto bill system. Um, basically people subscribing to my services. If they can subscribe to Netflix, if they can subscribe to internet, whatever, then they can subscribe to your business. So you need to think outside the box and think of ways for people to subscribe to you. So you can count on that income, you can count on boxes coming out, count on services coming out, count on monthly clients, that you are working with on a monthly basis, your regulars, it might not be something that you're super, super excited about. I'm not excited about like 5.30 a.m. I gotta post for people, I gotta post for, you know, a nonprofits and post for bars and whatever I was doing during 2020, but I was consistent income, I was getting them on an auto bill system, I knew these bills were coming out, I was good at what I was doing, and then a very another percentage of stuff that you need to have coming out is maybe 20 to 30%, depending on, again, your skill level, your patience level, what you can do, is your passive income. So these are your e-classes, these are your coaching, these are your e-stores, your merchandise stores, um, something that you're selling online, maybe it's an Etsy thing where you do a, 
I don't know, PNG, digital, backdrops, people are going to just buy. I have four or five stores cooking online right now. I'm going to list right down below some of my favorite free places that you can have merch stores that you can sell, um, you know, your images or shirts or hats or whatever without any stuff in your house, without any inventory, without handling any ship, shipping or processing, and I just get a check every month. So these are some of my favorites, Tee Public, Society6, Redbubble, Etsy has the ability now with Printful, which is their partner. So I have like 2,000 and something designs floating out there all over cyberspace that I've hand created, that I've done on my computer. If you're not very good at graphic design, you can use stuff like Canva and just type it out, save it as a PNG, upload it high quality, and then now you can get yourself some good quality merchandise. That is one way um, that I'm able to stay home with my kids, having a merchandise store and having some e-store and e-commerce, having some bread and butter clients. Um, if you need to really think through some other things that you need to learn, you need to have workshops in, that you need to build your techniques in, in order to have multiple streams of income, okay? So if you are getting people that are like, oh man, I wish that there was a service, learn it. Okay, take a workshop in it, get certified in it, ask about it, get a mentor in it. You're only limited by your imagination. I've been at home with my kids almost the last 12 years. I haven't paid one cent in childcare, and I'm homeschooled in full time, and I've been married to a pastor for almost the entire time. Pastors make nothing. I've had a supplement my entire income. Yes, we've had to live in basements. We've had to have one car. We've had a moped as the family vehicle. Get that. My husband had to drive the moped to his job when we had a broken down minivan. We've had to be on government assistance. We've had to do all this. Please do not say, oh, I can't do that. Oh, that's too hard. Because I'm telling you, dreams only do what you are willing to go after them for, okay? So we knew that we needed to do some things. We were, we were struggling, you know, we were able to save up a lot, only live off of one income for many, many, many of those years. Um, still homeschool our kids, buy things from the Dollar Tree. There are ways to do it, people. Yes, you might have to sacrifice your house, your comfort, your clothes. We never wear name brand clothes. We always shop at thrift stores. We've had to sacrifice some of that were like no vacations. We have to do like free or cheap stuff. But if you are willing to put in the work 12 years down the road, we have two properties now, we have four businesses, we're still chugging away, we're able to get a lot of money in savings now because we still have that one income rule where anything that I make is bonus and me for the kids and stuff for my you know, business and you know vacations, that kind of thing, but we're living off of other income streams. Obviously, the rules are reversed when my husband was unemployed. So we just ebb and flow with what's happening and what's going on. And I'm telling you guys, I have met so many people where they have the talent, they have the ability to start a business, but they don't want to make that extra sacrifice and that extra step to quit their full-time job or, or see the bigger picture, to be at home more with their kids or to, to um, save money on daycare or whatever the, the case may be so that they can do ultimately what they're passionate about or do ultimately what's good for their family and they're not willing to put in that work. And I'm telling you right now, it will be hard. You will sometimes cry in vehicles. You will want to give up. But you are looking at someone who has perfected the art of failure. So true. You have to learn how to embrace failure, learn from failure, get up, dust yourself off and get back on the horse every single time. So if stuff isn't working, think outside the box, try it again. If stuff isn't working over here, think outside the box, learn this new skill, get certified, come back to it, come back around it, and then go do it. I'm telling you, it's my little pet talk, but oh, well, like my life is hard. We, the only reason why I own businesses is because I lost a child to miscarriage between my first and my second. I was depressed. Postpartum depression is a real thing. Mental illness is a real thing. Mental health is so key. And I'm telling you, having something to keep my mind off of what was happening, being at home with my kids, being isolated, alone, raising these kids, 
having something that I could create, do, and build has been such a blessing to me, and I'm so, so grateful for it. However, on the flip side, um, my personality, I'm a very driven person. Okay, I'm a very organized, very driven person. So it's very easy for me to latch my identity onto my success, latch my identity onto what I have done, my accomplishments and all that. And it's very, very hard for me to have that discipline of, you know what, I did a great job. I won this award, I did this and this, this, this. But that is not my worth and that is not my value. And I think that's where a lot of creatives trip up, where we start the thing, we start what we want to do, we get some momentum, we get excited, but then we either, two things, we get really, really discouraged and we quit, that's not good, or we really get big-headed, we get ego-driven, and then we think it's about us and it's think, we think it's our identity now. And there's this very, very fine, fine line where you have to now, you know, 10, 12 years into it, think, I did a really good job, I can be proud of myself. I am proud of the work I've done. But then on the other side, you have to think, hey, I need to stay humble, I need to stay hungry, I need to stay focused on the goal, and if my ultimate goal is to be home with my family, and this job is not doing that, I need to take it a back seat for this season. And you need to be okay with that ebbing and flowing and dancing. And I just call it, when I get those feelings of like, ah, oh, I have this ambition and I want to do more, but then I'm like, oh, I'm going to be away from my kids and that was the whole point of doing this, providing for my family, providing for my kids, then I need to take a step back and it's okay. I'm not going to disappoint anybody. But then I also need to think, hey, I need something to get me out of the house because I need to meet people. I need to get out there. I need to create. I need to build. And we have this longing to do something beautiful and wonderful and build something and me washing dishes all day and folding laundry is not satisfying that either so it's this very very fine as a mom as an entrepreneur and as a faith-filled uh, entrepreneur how I can manage and ebb and flow with each season and so that's something that I've had to really think through balance and boundaries now 10 12 whatever years in um, the first year, I'm just trying to learn everything. I'm just trying to do everything and say yes to everything. And now, I am more protective of my time. I'm more protective of my energy. I'm more protective of, I'm only going to check my email certain times of the day. I'm only going to have, I'm going to have my phone on silent or do not disturb during these hours when I can be with the kids. And the other hours, I can have it on, but I need to be in and out. So I set timers. So I just boom, 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 get in, get out. So that way I'm not having that workaholicism come in. So I'm not replacing my family with success. And then, you know, obviously when I want to be with my family, I am there. I am engaged. And so that is a constant thing I'm having to battle and having to, to go back and forth and having to sacrifice and having to, to relive and rehash seasonally. Depends on the season. Now my, my daughter's in middle school, so I have to be even more protected because... I have a lot more school related stuff. And then when my kids were baby, baby, babies and I'm nursing every hour, that's a different season as well. So you have to really ebb and flow and go with the punches as an entrepreneur. Uh, common business scams that I see people falter all the time. No joke. Uh, getting DMs from people, wanting you to be featured, uh, wanting you to win a contest, wanting you to send in paperwork, because your business is not eligible for whatever, whatever, you don't have the right paperwork. Number one, when you sign up your LLC, they will never contact you about, oh, now you need this thing, okay? Uh, it, unless it's from the SCC from Virginia, the commission of whatever, or whatever state that you sign up with, or unless it's from your city government, you should not be getting any other, like, now you need to fill out this paperwork to be the certified business, or now you need to... No, that's not... I've had too many people send $40 to get some certificate, which doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean anything, doesn't do anything. Um, you're going to get... Once you start getting the ball rolling on your marketing, you're probably going to get a spammer or a robot every week. 
expect it to happen, expect it to be a random person. It's like, what's up? How you doing? Whatever. Or want to sell Bitcoin or whatever. So just don't engage. Nobody from your bank will ever text you. You should not be, especially as a service provider, you should be getting on a phone chat with every single person that you want to do business with, a FaceTime chat, meet them first before meeting with them in public before meeting in an alley, especially photographers, especially photographers, especially women photographers, they falter with this every time they're going to some shady, you know, car parking lot on the top of some abandoned whatever to get this beautiful photo. Well, you really have to cover your bases. Make sure you're meeting people online. Make sure you have a buddy, a chaperone with you, a security, your husband, your boyfriend, whoever you're doing, you know, whatever you need to do to make sure that you're covered. Um, selling things online, what I, I just got scammed in the sense of I bought a drone on eBay, but somehow the tracking was sent to me saying it was delivered, but no drone. I complained to eBay, a refund was sent to my account overnight, not a problem. It has like, you know, protection coverage, whatever. Um, if you're selling online, you need to be meeting with somebody in person or through people that you know so that you can test the product and hold the product before any money is exchanged. Um, you need to have some type of coverage on that money or deposits being done so when people come to use your services, they're covered by a deposit and a, and a contract and all of this stuff. If you are looking at setting up a contract system or a sign up or an e sign system. I use Jotform and I love it because it has all of my deposits, my booking forms on there. People can sign a waiver, people can sign a model release, and all of these things. So, having tons of templates on there, especially for service providers, is really helpful. And a lot of them are free. Um, I only pay like 30 bucks a month uh, for Jotform if you want to get like a certain amount, but the free, you can get like 100 submissions a month for free. And that's totally worth it because they have tons of great stuff. All right, so we covered a lot of ground today. We talked about mental health, having boundaries. We talked about getting yourself organized, getting up, getting a routine. So that way you can be totally present when you need to be present and totally there when you need to work and when you want to do something beautiful and wonderful and creative. We talked about not getting scammed and what to look for and preparing yourself and protecting yourself, making sure you have written down your three streams of income in a notepad, like, hey, what's my bread and butter? Where does my marketing need to lie? Do I need to get business clients? Do I need to get corporate clients? Do I need to have people that are on auto bill with me, auto um, subscription things with me? How is there a way that I can build some passive income streams through courses, through e-stores, through merchandise? How are some ways that I can get money in the freelance basket by doing things here and there for people as bonus? How can I get those? So you need to be writing down your own business goals and your own thought process of where you're going to put your stuff in. Very, very important. Another thing to wrap it up, make sure when you get your LLC, and you get your business license, you're getting a business uh, account through through you know Navy Federal or whatever, BB&T or uh, Wells Fargo or whatever uh, bank that you're using that has a business section. So you have a business card so that you're using your business card and your business money for your business. So that way when tax time comes, everything just comes out of one account and makes it a cinch. You'll cover your business by getting business insurance. It's really, really important, especially for event people or people that are going to job sites like, like wedding, uh, wedding event planners or florists that they have to go on site and they're carrying stuff and they're, you know, cake people or whatever. To so have business insurance, Next is one, His Cox has a system. Um, there's a lot of different places that do it and you can you can go on there and check and look and get your get your quote. I like to cover all of my gear um, so that when I go out, all of my gear is covered. All of, you know, me is covered. If I trip on somebody, I'm covered. If I go to an event, I'm covered. I've totally fallen on people and tripped on people by accident. I was pregnant one time shooting a wedding and I totally passed out and fell onto the uncle with all twenty thousand dollars worth of gear on me. Could have totally hurt him, but because I was covered and the bride was totally cool. Nothing happened, but totally got EMS calling me and I just had to get up and 
have my second shooter uh, finish the job. So, guys, there are some warnings out there, some just, you know, cover your bases, make sure that your family's safe and your family's covered and the things that you're doing are covered. And I hope this four-week series, Lady Boss series, was very helpful for you. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram, social media, and don't forget to check out LadyBossResources.com. Have an awesome, awesome, awesome time starting your business and DM me or email me if you guys have any questions or concerns or want to chat about your business idea. Thank you guys.